Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white reanimator deck, which can try to get some of these expensive cards in play as early as turn 4, and that's now possible thanks to the new addition from Wilds of Eldraine, Collector's Vault, a 2-mana artifact. For 2-mana we can tap it, draw a card, then discard a card, and create a treasure token. So if we play turn 2 Collector's Vault, turn 3 activate it, that will give us an extra treasure token to cast one of our 5-mana sorceries on turn 4, and in the process we also get to discard one of these expensive cards, and then cast an Invoke Justice, for instance, returning target permanent card from our graveyard to the battlefield, as well as giving us 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters that we get to distribute. So that can bring back cards like 1 with a Multiverse, an 8 mana enchantment, lets us take a look at the top card of our library at any time, and we may play lands and cast spells from the top of our library, and once each turn we can cast a spell from hand or the top of our library without paying its mana cost. So let's say we bring back 1 with a Multiverse on turn 4, using our trick, then we can still cast another spell for free, such as Atraxa, Grand Unifier, which can generate a ton of card advantage while stabilizing the board. We can also cast a Cityscape Leveler, blow something up, or cast a Portal to Phyrexia to make the opponent sacrifice three creatures, and then we can start reanimating them as well. So lots of powerful tools here that we can potentially get access to from the graveyard. And then besides Invoke Justice, we also have two copies of Repair and Recharge. Does not bring back creatures, so we can't reanimate our Atraxa with it, but we can still bring back artifacts or enchantments, and then also make a Power Stone token, which is very helpful in potentially hard casting some of our expensive artifacts, or we can also use it to activate Collector's Vault. So we do have quite a few use cases for the Power Stone tokens, which is why I'm playing Repair and Recharge over other 5 mana options, like Campus Renovation, or even Invasion of Tolvada, if we were to splash a bit of black, which is not too difficult. But this way we also get to keep the mana base a bit more streamlined. We're essentially a red-white deck, mainly white for Invoke Justice. With enough planes we also get to enable Laid on Arms, which is another perk. And then we're also playing all these Tri-Lands to basically enable the Leyline Binding to be a cheaper removal spell. And in the meantime, if we have a few of these Splash Callers, it also becomes easier to hard cast Atraxa, especially with the help from our Treasure Tokens that we get from Big Score and Collector's Vault. So the Tri-Lands are actually doing a lot of work, and we usually don't mind playing some tapped on turn 1, and maybe another tapped on turn 3. And then in the meantime we can still activate our Collector's Vault on turn 3 as well. And then uh, to help out in the mono red matchup, we're also main decking four copies of Sunset Revelry, can gain for life, make a pair of one ones, sometimes even draw a card. And then we're just hoping to get some of these expensive cards on the battlefield as soon as possible. One with a multiverse also stacks in multiples, so if we have two copies of one with a multiverse in play, we can cast two spells for free in that turn cycle, which is also a lot of fun. And then Atraxa is going to be the main way we actually cross the finish line. And then sometimes Portal to Phyrexia can also help out by killing the opponent with their own creatures. Against creature light decks, Portal to Phyrexia is not always the best. And then we might also struggle to close out the game if our opponent can answer all our Atraxas and selling them in the process especially, so that's why I also included one Cityscape Leveler, just to diversify things a little bit, give us an extra answer to posing enchantments that may be exiling or Atraxa. And then the mana base, lots of planes to enable our Laid on Arms and Invoke Justice, one Iganjo for added interaction, then a two mountains, not bothering with the red channel land just to keep our basic land count as high as possible, to also discount our Leyline Binding, then Sundown Pass can fix for red and white, and then lots of tri lands to help discount our binding and to help hard cast our Atraxa as well. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play and our hand seems fine. Got early removal with laydown arms, big score, discarding one with the multiverse, and then repair and recharge to bring it back. Turn two now, play collector's vault. So we can turn three, already discard one with the multiverse, maybe turn four, repair and recharge. Opponent on the red aggro. And we can still lay down arms here in the meantime. Okay, so hopefully find an untapped land so we can repair and recharge next turn. If not, we can big score and do it to turn after. But against red aggro, every turn counts. And we did get there, so yeah, this is pretty much the ideal start for us. Even finding an Atraxa, so I think this is lights out for Monorad. Cast a free Atraxa on turn four. And find Portal. 
invoke justice maybe as our sorcery, although revelry is maybe even safer in case something goes wrong. Enchantments, and I'll get a planes for late on arms. That looks okay. Can cast a free portal to Phyrexia next turn. And I don't really see them coming back. And our opponent agrees. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing a reanimation effect at 5, but uh, I think we keep. We've got a red mana for a big score. And then we get to dig pretty deep to find one of them. Could lay down arms. Evolve Sleeper. For now, I think, still go Jadmir's Garden. And then next turn we can reevaluate. Just an attack for one. So if they're not doing anything, they're going to level up Sleeper, so we may as well exile it then. Opponent probably holding up some spot removal, so we can expect them to have something like a go for the throat in hand. Found our one with a multiverse. And a Liliana. Okay, that can be pretty annoying. Probably have to hang on to late on arms for my interaction. Don't want to get Atraxa exiled. So maybe ditch portal for now. The card I'm afraid of here is something like a Graveyard Trespasser or Lord Skitter that can wreak havoc on my graveyard. So probably just binding the Liliana now. Don't really want to discard another card. If we draw a fourth plane so we can deal with the Shieldred. Which might be necessary if we want a big score, otherwise we end up taking a lot of damage. Okay, opponent's playing blue as well. There's Shieldred. Did not find planes, just a fourth land. May as well big score now, so it doesn't get countered. And then discard one with a multiverse, since we can more realistically hardcast Atraxa. So this is going to cost me quite a bit of life. Do have the fourth planes now for late on arms to exile Shieldred. And then Revelry can gain us some life back. But uh, not going to waste my treasures. So yeah, we'll see what they have in hand here. Gix to draw extra cards is quite good. Right, take our draw step down to 7. Find another late on arms. So play a land. Late on arms, shield roots. And then if I Revelry now, I get two 1-1s, one but I don't get to draw a card. If I laid on arms Gix and then Revelry, I would get to draw a card, but I wouldn't get to 1-1s. One I think drawing a card is more important since we're digging towards one of those reanimation effects. And find Collector's Vault. Alright, so next turn we can still hard cast Atraxa. So that's going to be the plan. Opponent's got a backup shield roots. And we still suspect removal for Atraxa. So yeah, we're not going to have much life left after everything is said and done. There's a go for the throat we suspected. Okay, so... A late on arms as our sorcery answers shield roots probably necessary. And then binding as our enchantment. Since there's no reanimation effects. And then get Rafine's Tower to get closer to hard casting another Atraxa, I suppose. So we'll be at three. But we have two answers, so I can Leyline Binding before my draw step, so we don't take two more damage. And big score was a nice draw. So I think I big score now, ditching probably Collector's Vaults. Play a Planes and Pass, and then we've got another Atraxa coming up. Shielded number three, okay. I guess we can Atraxa first here. Opponent might have a counter spell in hand. Is this a make disappear? Can pay for it, so they would have to sack Shieldred. 
But then Portal would get Atraxa back. Found another one mana binding. Invoke Justice to get back our enchantment. Get another untapped land. A big score and sure another portal. Looks good. So we can play the planes. Lay down arms shield roots, hang on to instant speed leyline binding. This could also be a fairy mastermind in hand. Seems like we have turned the corner. GG's. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a reasonable hand, missing our reanimation effect. But we've got a collector's vault to dig towards one, and a laid on arms as removal in the meantime. So six cards we're excited to draw. Big score, I guess, would also be okay as a way to hard cast Atraxa, thanks to the treasure tokens. So we've got quite a few outs, and then of course any removal or other interaction early on will buy us more time. Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn on Mountain and Kumano. Alright, so we get to play Collector's Vault and exile their 2-drop next turn, plus Activate Vault. It's gonna be another Kumano. Any 1-drops. Just to play with fire. Alright, so opponent's creature light, maybe a 3 mana creature for next turn. Which I could lay line binding, and we can do so at instant speed. So just gonna pass. And then for now, probably discarding portal, but we can see what we draw first with collector's vault. Unless we need to binding a creature here. Yep, Godric would have Celebration enabled, thanks to the transformed Kumano. So it seems like a great target for Leyline Binding. So we still take 2 down to 14. Next turn, opponent gets another 2-2 two, two Haste. Now, I might be interested in discarding one with a Multiverse as the most powerful card to bring back. And uh, we can start here in case I draw a tapped land. Found a big score instead, and we can lay down arms etching. Okay, so next turn casting big score would set up an Atrax on the following turn. But we can hope to top deck one of our five mana sorceries here. Just a Rafine's Tower. So probably main phase big score discard portal. In case we draw another lay down arms. Revelry is not bad either. So if I were to cast Revelry after playing Planes, then I would still have two treasures left, which is enough to cast Atraxa. So this looks okay to me. Felden. We're probably going to let through and double block etching. Hope they don't have a monstrous rage. Trades happen, take three. And a 12 life, I feel relatively safe. Tiny chance her opponent has some act of treason effect to steal Atraxa for a turn, and then we're probably dead. But otherwise, a 7 7 Flying Vigilance, Death Touch, and Life Link that finds more answers should be good enough. And we did find a couple powerful sorceries. Definitely get an Atraxa, big score, planes, one enchantment. And then the safest is probably to get a Sunset Revelry, even though Invoke Justice gets back one with a multiverse. It's a close call. I'll go with a Revelry. And then there's nothing I can cast, so we'll play the tap land and see what's up. Opponent takes their draw step. So with two cards in hand, yeah, unless there's an act of treason, we should be fine. Looks like they can actually take out Atraxa, a lightning strike plus another lightning strike. Okay, so game's not over yet, although now it should be. Repair and recharge 
Bring back one with a multiverse. Play another free one with a multiverse. Can cast late on arms, but first we want a revelry. Uh, let's see here. And then we also want to cast a free Atraxa. So many things we gotta do. So I guess step one, play revelry for two mana. So I get to two one ones. And then play free Atraxa, which is the priority. And then get Leyline Binding, Atraxa, Portal, a land, and Invoke Justice. Okay. So our opponent's pretty much in the same spot as last turn, except worse, and they only get to one card to answer the board, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and so what do we think of our hands? A little slow with no untapped mana, but I think I still keep. Can play a relatively cheap Leyline Binding after playing our Trial Lands. And then Collector's Vault as our discard outlet, Invoke Justice, bring back Atraxa. Sounds like a plan. And in fact, we could already cast a 1 mana Binding on turn 2. Against a Poison deck, turn 1 Skrelv. I guess there's no harm in waiting to see what else they play, but probably need to exile Skrelv. Since that can protect everything else. Slaughter Singer. So, could wait for them to attack. Exile Slaughter Singer. But our opponent's gonna keep up Skrelv. So, may as well Binding then. Yeah, against Poison, some of our tools aren't as helpful. All the life gain doesn't really matter when facing a Poison deck. So this seems like a tough matchup. But we have a good draw at least. Play Vaults. And then it's going to be turn 5, Invoke Justice at the earliest. By then we'll have taken probably at least 5 Poison. Opponent's got a Sentry, which can actually exile our Vaults, so that's going to slow us down. Big score we cannot cast, alright, so yeah. It's gonna be another turn before we can potentially invoke. And that's gonna be three more poison in the meantime. Another sentry, that's brutal. Well, now we just want an untapped land for big score. Don't need vault anymore. And we found it. Okay, pass a turn. So, yeah, we'll be at 9 poison here. That's going to be too late for us to do anything since we don't have any sweepers. Maybe our 2 mana sorcery making 2 one ones can keep us alive for an extra turn, but I doubt it. Opponent attacks all out. I guess we could big score and hit another leyline binding. Which I probably should have tried to go for a little sooner. Nine poison did find a late on arms. So step one invoke, get back Atraxa. Then we can still lay down arms, maybe find an untapped land and a leyline binding. Found another lay down arms that works too. Untapped land. Make it planes, sure. And then artifact and enchantments. So we can actually clear two of their creatures. And then technically still be in the game. Atraxa doesn't get exiled by sentry. But the nullification will. Alright, GG's. There was a lot of exile effects here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is good, not great, missing a reanimation effect, but at least we've got the early removal with plenty of basic land types. And against mono reds, we're definitely gonna need it. Atraxa will be nice if we can put it on the battlefield, but we're still pretty far away from that. 
Rent Resolve, at least no haste creature, and we did find an Invoke Justice. So yeah, now we'll go for Vault, next turn activate, discarding Atraxa, play Tapland, and then turn 4, Invoke Justice. Opponent with an Urbrask's Forge, good in the grindier matchups where you expect a lot of spot removal, but it kind of plays into our game plan of taking over the late game. And Leyline Binding could also be an answer, but I'm going to need my treasure for Invoke Justice. Can discard a truck sound of turn. And yeah, then we should be good to go. Another Kumano. If they had a haste creature on turn 2, this game could have potentially gotten out of hand, but with turn 4 Atraxa, if that's not good enough against Monored, I'm not sure what is. Still taking 5 here. And our Atraxa will also pick up some plus 1 counters. So just gotta hope they don't have a Act of Treason effect to hit us with their own Atraxa. And what do we get? Atraxa, Multiverse, and a Concession. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. Two removal spells early on. Big score to discard Multiverse, and then hopefully find our 5 mana Sorcery to bring it back. And there it is. Okay. Opponent on potentially a black midrange strategy. We still need a fourth land, but at least Binding is castable now. And a Trespasser is pretty annoying for our deck. Now I can also use it as a discard outlet, although I still won't have the mana to cast Invoke Justice next turn. Um, yeah, I guess we can just untap and see if we can maybe lay down arms instead of using Binding. Alright, Binding it is. And then I can discard a lay down arms. Keep it daytime. And if Shieldred shows up, we could exile it before our draw step. It's gonna be Sorin, that one we don't mind as much. No land is too bad. In that case, I guess we'll uh, exile Sorin. Put on Dig takes 7 to put the Virtue of Persistence in hand, so that's a bit of a nombo with Sorin, I guess. Now Shielder shows up, so this big score is going to hurt. Only have three planes for late on arms. I can cast it now. Probably best to wait until the opponent's end step to play around another Graveyard Trespasser, even though it will switch to nighttime. And then, yeah, discard Multiverse, invoke it back, and hope we can take over from there. Liliana, not the end of the world. No attack, opponent playing around Wandering Emperor, so that worked out for us. And then I could discard another one with a multiverse. I'm also not opposed to discarding Laid on Arms, so we can bring back one with a multiverse and immediately play a second one. So we have two free spells per turn, which is pretty sweet, and then we'll probably find an answer to Shieldred at some point. Like a portal to Phyrexia. Can also cast Cityscape Leveler. So step one. And then with Shieldred in the graveyard we'll have something to get back with Portal. Uh, Laid on Arms is missing a Plains. So close call here, Portal versus Leveler. I think I go for Portal, just get their Shieldreds as quickly as possible. And then next turn Leveler can destroy Liliana if we cast it. Discard Collector's Vault. Bones got a backup shield roots. Drop 
drop it. So they cancel each other out. There's an extra plane, so now we can exile their shielded. Can uh, pay two mana for a vault. So I can cast a free leveler. Still get the cast trigger. And we'll uh, destroy Liliana. So we don't have to worry about it. Exile Shieldreds. And then I can still activate Collector's Vault if I'd like. Just to get rid of the Sundown Pass on top of my deck. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And what do we think of our hand? Yeah, it's a little slow. But we can cast turn 2 Leyline Binding. Turn 4 Big Score. Turn 5 Invoke. So, it's got to be good enough against Red Aggro. So hoping we can find some removal early on. And of course our life gain. Turn to Flame Breather, so probably just gonna exile that first chance I get. Another Binding was a good draw. And hope they don't have a hasty 3-drop instead. But didn't want to let them untap and cast a burn spell in response to deal the extra point. So I still need a fourth land. And then big score gets us to one with a multiverse. And then we're not guaranteed to take over from there. But uh, it does give us a pretty good chance. Okay, there's a land. So pass a turn with Leyline binding up. Looks like a play with fire to scry towards a third land. So possible that they are holding some three mana creatures. Opponent attacks with etching. Yeah, let's exile it, keep our life total high. And it's going to be a second main Flame Breather picking up a plus one counter. Okay, so might as well play the planes. Although, even with one mountain we can still cast and invoke justice. Could main phase big score, although maybe they'll play around the Wandering Emperor if we don't. Could cast a Late on Arms as the thing, and then still have the mana to invoke justice next turn. I guess even casting our two mana sorcery would leave us enough mana to invoke. So I think I should go for it here. Find double Atraxa, which I could also hard cast next turn, although invoke, bring back one with a multiverse, and then cast Atraxa for free. That's probably going to be the sequence. So we've got five damage incoming, that's still manageable. Anything else? We're at eight. And then since I'm not going to make use of the plus one counters, I may as well repair and recharge. Bring back one with a multiverse. And then cast a free Atraxa. Uh, yeah, that seems better than a big score. Hope to find more Leyline Bindings. Which we did. Portal to Phyrexia. Get an untapped land. Big score. And then I guess creature, so we can also get the leveler besides a regular artifact. And then if I don't want to discard to hand size, I can Leyline Binding. Play with Fire puts us to 5. Alright, so double burn spell can still get us. Opponent with 3 cards in hand. So Play with Fire Lightning Strike would do it. Invasion of Ragatha puts us to 1, which is not 0. Close one. And then now we should be able to take over pretty easily with Invoke Justice, also putting more counters on Atraxa. Awesome. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's got the early removal covered. Don't have any discard outlets or reanimation effects, so I think we still mulligan. This is a bit more balanced. And then Binding would still cost 3 mana here, so probably keep the Laydown Arms. 
We've got a discard outlet and a reanimation effect, so just missing something big to bring back. But at least with Invoke Justice, both creatures and non-creatures can work. Turn one planes into an officer, and there's Atraxa, okay. So hang on to Laden Arms to maybe exile Thalia if that shows up. That can certainly slow us down. Otherwise, turn two vaults. And then we could be on track to get an Atraxa in play on turn four. Opponent's got a reinforcements end of turn, so maybe a mono white soldier's deck. Still gonna have access to Thalia. Nope, blue white soldiers it is, and a siege veteran's next. So if I play a tapped Rafine's Tower, I can still lay down arms the veteran. But the question is if I'm better off just activating Collector's Vault instead. And I think we are. Could also play Sundown Pass, lay down arms the reinforcements, and then still use Vault. But then I would also need an untapped land for Invoke Justice. So seems better not to take that risk. Now, Atraxa is not necessarily going to stabilize us if opponent has a Brutal Cathar in hand, so I might have to survive two more hits, which I don't think we will. So yeah, Brutal Cathar is probably game over. Thalia right now would still mess us up. So, yeah, being on the draw with her opponent curving out means we may not get there. Opponent not attacking with the Veteran and the 1-1 token, perhaps for a second main Sky Strike Officer to draw a card. And yeah, there's the Officer. Makes sense. So activate Collector's Vault, discard Atraxa, and hope for the best. Can quickly reassess, but yeah, I don't think there's any other plays that make sense in the spots. Just gotta go for it. And hope to dodge Brutal Cathar. Soaring City could also bounce Atraxa, and that's game over. But we can set ourselves up for next turn with a Leyline Binding, Revelry versus. Lay down arms, go for revelry, Atraxa and vaults, and a land. So opponent gets to draw. So they'll have four cards, and if one of those is Cathar, it's lights out. Can discard maybe a tapped land, and probably don't need another vault. Do they have it? Alright, GG's. Not much we could do. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand does not seem all that amazing. Just missing a few too many combo pieces. This could get there. Hopefully only need one Atraxa. Opponent on blue-black. So... Sunset Revelry, probably not at its best in this matchup, but it can still buy us a bit of extra time. And then Big Score could also cast Atraxa on the following turn. So not sure yet if I'm gonna discard it. Poisoner make a food. And the Liliana. Yeah, Liliana's gonna be pretty annoying. I think we ditch a Revelry now. Even though Revelry can potentially protect us from a minus two. Opponent hasn't presented any creatures yet. Now what do we discard? Maybe a land. Liliana up to five loyalty, so if we don't find a binding soon, that can ultimate.
Yeah, I guess we'll pass. And then we still have hope of hard casting Atraxa. Although that does mean our opponent would get to ultimate Liliana in the meantime, which is going to be difficult to recover from. Could also big score in response. And discard headquarters, see what we can find. And then maybe discard Atraxa if we find a reanimation effect for it. Alright, so now discarding Atraxa is not so crazy, since we don't actually have the untapped lane to cast it. And then I might still have mana left to cast Binding afterwards. Just gotta hope to dodge Graveyard Hate. Poisoner's okay. Let's go for it. Invoke back Atraxa. And then we can cast a 1-mana Leyline Binding here, thanks to our Tri-Lines. So that's what we're digging for. And we found it. Can get an untapped land. And then artifacts for creature. Maybe go for another Atraxa over Leveler. And then another Invoke Justice looks good. Exile Liliana. And then we should be in the driver's seat and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And what does our hand do for us? Not much. Definitely missing a discard outlet, only two lands, and only the one planes as well, so take a mulligan. This is missing some of our combo pieces, but a vault helps. I'll play one on turn two. And then if we're up against a red aggro, a revelry is helpful. Turn two Felden. So we've got a couple of options. Revelry right now would also draw a card, so that seems like a good starting point. And then play Tapped Garden. And then hope to pick up a land to cast Big Score next turn. Looks okay. If I played Sonam Pass, I didn't have enough planes to exile Felden. Impulse finds Swiss Spear, play with fire. And end the festivities, clears our 1 1s. Okay. So prioritize playing the planes when we can. And then I have to decide what to do next. Could activate Vaults. And then lay down arms, Felden. Opponent's probably committed to playing Swiss Spear. Could binding it. And then wait on big score. If I big score now, there's a small chance I could hard cast an Atraxa if we draw into it. But then I would probably also have to keep the untapped land. Let's start with a Vault activation and see what we find. Another big score. Yeah, one of them can go. Now let's just exile Felden now. Keep a binding. Not sure yet if I'm exiling a Swiss Spear. We're at 19. May need this for something scarier. If they double enable prowess, then I might go for it. Because we are running out of steam here. Opponent still has plenty of cards in hand. Alright, now that they cast another way to enable prowess, I'll save myself the damage from Swiss Spear. And then I can main phase big score discarding land. See what we find. Okay, so now the plan is cast Atraxa. Don't want to waste any treasures, still need an untapped land for it as well. Warfare, we can binding. Alright, so we won't be casting Atraxa now. So just play Tapped Garden, pass. 
could activate Vault, I suppose. Discarding one with a multiverse. Ooh, how about a nice Sunset Revelry? So it wouldn't be making tokens, but right now would gain four and draw a card unless our opponent plays a burn spell in response. Which I guess we're okay with. That worked. And we'll pass a turn. So if I had another untapped lands, I could still binding the warfare and then also cast Atraxa uh, next turn. Maybe it is worthwhile to exile the Warfare now. Also makes it less likely for the opponent to answer Atraxa with several burn spells. And given our healthy life total here, I think we can wait another turn on Atraxa and be okay. Another Warfare. And a Kumano. That's two damage. Alright, no untapped lanes, so let's use the Vault. And discard one land. Probably okay to play this now. And then next turn I'll be able to play Atraxa and still maybe play Binding afterwards. Alright, double warfare is quite scary. So I wouldn't be surprised if they killed Atraxa now. But, uh, yeah. Still gonna go for it. Finding Binding. Back up Atraxa, big score. I Ganjo and Invoke Justice. Looks about right. And we get a free Collector's Vault as well. So we've got a full grip now. Can wait on Binding to respond to a burn spell don't need to play it now. Happy to block Kumano here. Another opponent plays another one. Exile Warfare. Take two down to 12, and with one card in hand, we should be safe. And our opponent agrees. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, missing a discard outlet here and something expensive. Just working with a late on arms revelry and then kind of hope for the best. Don't love it. Against red aggro, this hand is okay, but uh, let's take a mulligan. All right, this is a little bit better. And then could ditch revelry, keep all the spot removal, or I can ditch late on arms since we have a cheap binding. And then Revelry is also likely to draw me a card, since we were on the play with a mulligan. So one mana binding available up against turn one island. Planes, so maybe blue-white control. Yeah, I'm not opposed to just uh, cantripping with Revelry. Field of Ruin. Okay, can big score at instant speed now. Bone's probably going to fire off that Field of Ruin. And then we don't need to worry about a counter spell in response. Goes for Jedmir's Garden. And we can get a mountain to replace it. Yeah, control decks are going to be pretty tough for our deck since they tend to have a lot of answers and not a lot of creatures for us to get back with Portal to Phyrexia. So, for now, might want to cycle the headquarters at some point, so let's just go with planes, pass with big score up, and I'm sure they have their own card draw here. Deluge. So let the Deluge resolve and then cast my big score afterwards. And then I'm thinking discard Revelry still. Alright, not the best set of draws. But at least we can still cycle Headquarters.
And now we could hardcast Atraxa. Unlikely to resolve, admittedly. But I don't have any amazing alternatives. And we at least forced issue here. Alright, that resolved. So our opponent must have kept a hand full of cheap interaction for the red aggro decks, for instance. Not prepared to counter Atraxa. Sweet. So yeah, we got to see our reanimator deck in action here. And of course Atraxa got to steal the show, but we also got to see the power of our vaults enabling those turn 4 explosive turns, especially combined with our one with the multiverse. So overall pretty fun deck, definitely designed to beat up on the red decks with all the early interaction and our revelry to gain life, and can potentially be adjusted for best of 3 where you've got a bit more flexibility in the sideboard, can also mix up what kinds of cards you bring back from the graveyard, although then uh, graveyard hate could also become a bit of an issue. But at least we can discard most of our cards at instant speed, which can dodge some of the creatures like Lord Skitter and the Graveyard Trespasser. It's going to be a bit harder when facing cards like the Cauldron or the Hearse, which can exile at instant speed. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.